All right, here we go with two-dimensional arrays. All we're going to need on our form is a button, which I'm going to label create, and a list box so that we can use it for outputting uh, the stuff that's stored in our 2D array. Go ahead and double click on your button. So the first thing that we need to know is how do I actually make this 2D array and so that I can store things in it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a couple of variables called rows and columns so that we can specify each time at runtime how many rows and columns we want. Uh, so that's one reason I'm doing this, is so we can change it up each time we run the program. But another reason I'm doing it is so that you don't get used to putting in hard-coded numbers for the rows and columns. So I'm going to go dim rows as integer, and I'm going to get that from an input box. So we're going to use these two variables to actually specify the size of our 2D array. Just like with any other variable, you start with dim, you give it a name, I'm going to call mine matrix. Just like with regular arrays, you put parentheses, except instead of specifying just a single number, as in this is how many items I want in my list, we're going to specify two numbers, as in this is how many rows and columns I want in my 2D array. So rows, comma, columns is how you could do that. And just like with any other variable, you declare what kind of things are going to go in it. So that could be whatever you want. It could be a 2D array of students, or a 2D array of uh, pizzas, or a 2D array of booleans, whatever. Now, technically, uh, well, here, let's do this. I'm going to show you another example. We're going to make a, a second declaration here. Because I want to show you how to fill a 2D array at, uh, in your code, uh, like hard code in the values, like I showed you with one-dimensional arrays. I don't know if you guys know if you remember doing uh, the, the, the curly braces for when you want to just specify exactly what goes in the array to begin with, and you separate those values by commas. To do that with a 2D array, uh, you actually need a nested set of brackets because now we're going to specify each row in our matrix. So if I wanted to do like a 3 by 4 like what's up on the board, um, you would you know, type in your numbers in this nested set of brackets. You close that set and then do a comma and then open up a new set of brackets for the next row. So you then specify what goes in that row close that set, and then finally our third row. So that, this kind of demonstrates that it's a list of lists. I'm listing out the lists that I want in my 2D array. Okay. Now, we are missing one other thing, though. I don't know if you remember, but when you, when you hard code in the values like this and declare it and fill it all at once, you don't put numbers in here, right? Because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to know what the size is supposed to be based on how many items you put in. So you don't put any numbers in. But since it's 2D, you do have to put a comma in. Apparently Visual Basic isn't smart enough to figure out that it needs to be two-dimensional. You have to actually put that comma in there and be like, hey, by the way, making it two-dimensional. Now, if we were to put numbers in into this, what would they be? Three and four, you would think, right? Except remember, Visual Basic is really stupid with how they do arrays. It's not three and four. It's two and three, right? It's the last index of the thing. So it's uh, the last index of the rows is two. The last index of the columns is three. But again, 
those don't go there since we're filling it right away. However, that does lead us back up to here. If I typed in three and four as my number of rows and columns, in, in order to actually make a three by four, I have to go rows minus one and columns minus one. Which, again, Visual Basic is like the only language that is dumb like this. Sorry? No, they're zero base. It's just that when you make them, the number that you specify here is the actual number of rows as opposed to the index of the last row. So yeah, it, no, the, everything's zero base everywhere. Um, okay, so now, next I want to show you just some properties of 2D, 2D arrays that we're going to need to access. So um, we're going to do a couple message boxes here. So like, let's say I want to... Uh, Let's say I want to print the uh, the bottom right value of matrix 2. So first of all, of course, I would reference the name of the variable. Matrix 2 is what I want to access. But if you just leave it as matrix 2, it's, it doesn't really know what you're talking about. You have to specify what from matrix 2 you want. What numbers am I going to use if I want the bottom right hand number of matrix 2? Yeah, it would be 2 and 3. That would get us the row 2, which is the last row, and column 3, which is the last column. Another really important um, property of matrices that we, we use all the time is the length property. I want you to go ahead and play this and see what this gets you. So the length gets us a value of 12, which really, that's not super helpful. There's not very many times where you want to actually know the total number of numbers in your, in your 2D array. What's much more helpful uh, when you're accessing stuff from arrays is how many rows and how many columns there are. So that's the last property I'll show you here is how do I actually know how many rows and columns are in this thing if you know I didn't declare it in the first place. So instead of length, you have to use this get length. And if you start using get length, you can see that it requires a parameter, an integer parameter that specifies what dimension do you want the length of. There are how many dimensions? Two. Two. And we got to specify which dimension we want the, 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 the length of. They are zero based again. So if you want the number of rows, you put get length zero. And then if you want the number of columns, you do get length 1. So these are the two properties that we're going to be using a lot in our code so that we can traverse our 2D arrays. Because when you traverse a 2D array, you access each row, and then you access each column in that row. And you need to know how many rows and columns there are. So we have this matrix that the user is going to specify the size of. And I want to be able to fill that matrix regardless of how big it is. So we're going to write this separate procedure. It'll be a sub since it's not going to return anything. I'm going to call mine fill 2D array. Now in order to fill it, we got to send it to the procedure as a parameter. And which kind of parameter will it be? It's got to be by ref if it's an array that we want to actually change. We're referencing the array itself, not a copy of the array. You can put whatever put whatever name you want there, but you do have to put that comma in there again to specify that it's two-dimensional. All right, so how are we going to work our way through this two-dimensional array? What are we going to have? All right, so we can start our nested loops with the standard way. Uh, so if I want to specify going through all the rows, what do I need to put here? No, I don't have access to rows here. 
that variable was local to our some 2D array, and then get length is the correct procedure, and you want to specify that you want the length of the zeroth dimension. So then in there, and then inside of there, since this is going to access me a particular row, now I need to access a particular column in that row. So, you know, first we'll, spit, we'll fill spot 0, 0, and then we'll fill spot 0, 1, and then 0, 2, and 0, 3 on until we get to the end of the, the row itself, which is the last column. And then we'll go down to the next row, which would be row 1, and we'll fill row 1, 0, and row 1, 1, and so on. So to actually put a value in, all we have to do is assign a value to our variable. Some 2D array is our variable. We do have to specify which spot in that variable, though, since it's a 2D list. So with that would be position ij. We'll assign it a value. We can use our rand. So if I want to print out all these values row by row, I'm going to make another procedure for that. And really, you can just copy a lot of stuff from the procedure we just wrote. So one thing I'm going to copy is the parameter itself, because I need to be sent the array that I'm supposed to print. And then you can go ahead and copy the code as well, because I'm going to be traversing this 2D array row by row, column by column. So all I've done so far is fill in the parameter, and copied the code from up above. Now, instead of filling in new values, this is the line of code I definitely don't want. Like I said, we're going to need to join up the, the row of numbers so that we can print it all at once. Because, we, again, we don't know how many numbers there's going to be, so it's not like we can be like, here, print these three numbers all at once, because there might be 20 numbers in a row. So I'm going to go, I'm going to dim a, a string. And then each time that we access a value, we're going to join on the next number to what's already there. So we're going to grab something from our 2D array. So here's where you could put tabs in if you wanted. I'm just going to put in a couple of spaces because I think tabs will probably get us too far. So that'll take a number, join it to the numbers that are already in print row. But there are two really important things that we need to add on here. So the printing itself, you're going to clear out your row of numbers. And then the printing itself comes outside of the inner for loop, but still inside the outer for loop. So to see that this actually works, uh, I'm going to go up to my button. I'm going to come out all these message boxes because I don't want them anymore. And with my original matrix, I'm going to call fill. Send to the matrix, no parentheses, right? Because they're sending the whole matrix. And then I call print and send it the whole matrix. Oh, no. All right, so we forgot something. 
All right, get those minus ones in there and run it again.